Okay, so now we're going to talk about the second design, uh, knowing that the first design does have its drawback about uh, the potential waste of the computing resources when making the uh, remote procedure call. As usual, we're going to learn about the uh, architecture for the observer design pattern before we see its implementation. It's actually very important practice for you to really see the design architecture before diving into the code. So this will be the architecture uh, in the bond diagram syntax. Let's now go over that to see uh, how the general observer pattern uh, will look like. Still, so the observer pattern, apparently you can see there are two sides. Uh, this side over here is the subjects over here or in the terminology uh, of the uh, observer pattern so the subject really is the server so we have a single server over here and on the other side we also got observer over here you can see this is a defer class over here it's a little bit similar to how we introduced the state design pattern previously remember there's only a single defer class called states under which you got different uh, kinds of states. So now it will be similar. Uh, this uh, under the observer, this uh, observer defer class, you got many kinds of uh, observer that's possible from up to, uh, observer one up to observer j. You know, symbolically, you can have as many kinds of observer as you like. Okay, let's uh, just go back to the uh, subjects for moments. Let's see the various uh, important bits for the subjects. The number one important uh, bits for the subject will be this particular declaration. So observer is an attribute of type a list of observer. So this is again a polymorphic list that we are doing, right? Remember, again, we are uh, going back to our in, uh, inheritance review week where we talk about polymorphic collection. So why is this polymorphic? Let's uh, see. So when you have a list of uh, observer over here, so that means every member for example uh, every member for this particular list so you got observers observers i where i is simply some valid index for the observers list has static type simply observer so observer is simply referring to this particular defer class how about dynamically so dynamically, it can be uh, any descendant class of the observer class, which can be observer one, can be observer two, up to observer j. So it can be observer one, observer two, all the way to observer j. Okay, so hopefully you can see that again, it's a polymorphic. Polymorphic collection. And then as we uh, will later illustrate, uh, vi uh, visualize to you uh, some simple test to see how things are will work together. Okay, let's see another uh, feature for the subjects. You can see this uh, routine over here called notifies. Uh, notify and updates to observer. Remember what we said previously. So now the, uh, the major improvement we are trying to make uh, from the previous design is we now we want the subject to be very proactive about any updates they make and the observers will just be passive. So notify over here is simply saying every time if there's any updates to any part of the subject in which case there are many observers observing uh, this piece of data or uh, several parts of the data. And then we'll talk about the implementation later, but for the notify, the post condition would simply be, we say for every O that is of type observer, you can see we're just trying to use the predicates to specify the contracts, right? It should be comfortable with uh, the predicate notation here, uh, which can be translated into a cross, which we'll see when we see the implementation. So what we are asserting is after the notify, every member O of the observers list. The list might be empty, but it might be non-empty as well. Every member O in the observers, it should be the case that O is up to date. Uh, slight typo over here. It should be up to date, okay? But when you see the source code, you will see that it's actually correct. So O the up to date. So now where does the up to date come from? So up to date with the subjects. So now let's, uh, that's not, that's now we have to think about dynamic binding. So what's going to happen is you can see on the observer side, we simply got up to date with uh, subjects. So this is exactly the routine, we, uh, the query we are calling from the subject side. And notice that this query here is uh, deferred. So let's think about what's really happening over here. At the runtime, what's going to happen is for the subjects, we're going to have this particular observers. 
observers uh, list. And let's say, for example, it's, let's say it's going to have a linked list of, let's say, four different observers, right? Let's say uh, each one of them may be dynamically different, but aesthetically is simply just observer. Dynamically, maybe the first one here is simply observer, maybe one. Okay, I'm just going to use different color to indicate dynamically they're of different type. So this will be observer two. And then, uh, let's see, hopefully I'm not running out of color. Observer three, uh, blue. Okay, we got another one, dynamically, observer four. Of course, we can have as many kinds of observer as we wish if the application uh, needs that. Okay, so now, how does this particular line is going to be evaluated? Think about this. So when you say all the up to dates, so now when you, if you talk about observers, uh, we got indices one, two, three, four. For example, when we say observers one, and then when we say dot up to dates, I'm just going to say up to date means up to date with the subject. I'm just saving some line over here. So when I say up to date, so now in this case, which version of the uh, up to date is it going to call? Well, apparently it's not going to call the version that's in observer because that version there is simply deferred. So it's guaranteed. This particular query is going to be affected, is going to be implemented as a version over here for this particular observer. It's also going to be implemented in another observer uh, accordingly as well. So now when you say observers one, we know that the dynamic type is simply observer one. So now this particular up to dates due to dynamic binding, it is going to call the version in observer one. And similarly, if you actually try to call maybe in, uh, index two, and then it is going to call the version that's in uh, observer two. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So it's really important for you to understand. So there's really a, uh, some close connection over here between the subjects and the observer. So for every observer that's really in the observers list, every time when you say, when you call update, up to date with subject, exactly how you do it, we're gonna see. But now this part over here is going to ex exercise dynamic binding uh, precisely, right? Precisely for this particular illustration over here. You want to know that. Okay, so now one more thing to say, we kind of we kind of assume so far that the list already exists like this. But how do we build this list to begin with? Well, the uh, the answer is we need to have attach and detach. So you can simply uh, we're gonna say uh, we're gonna show this to you uh, when we show the implementation. But in the subjects, uh, let me just write it here. In the subject, you're going to have uh, the following two commands just for simple addition and deletion into the list. So you're gonna say attach in the subjects, attach, and then you would say maybe some new observer. So this is going to be of type observer. Similarly, I can also got detach, which means to remove. Also OBS, observer. And this again corresponds to what, how we review the inheritance, especially polymorphic feature arguments, right? So now you can see that given that statically this particular parameter is simply observer, what can, what can I pass as argument value over here? Any descendant class of the observer, in which case observer one up to observer J. All right, so the attach and detach. So you can see that uh, the, mo the most important uh, point to understand from this arrow over here is the reason that we are drawing this client supply arrow is because in this uh, subject class, when we uh, we have a routine, uh, we got two routines, attach and detach, and then the uh, the variables, meaning the uh, namely their parameters, simply refer to observer. So that's why observer is like a supplier for the uh, subjects. Okay, so that's why we got attach and also detach over here. They are simply pointing to observer. Okay, so that's about the uh, generic architecture for the uh, observer design pattern. Now I'm just going to talk a little bit more detail about how you can instantiate this pattern here into our weather station, uh, our weather data example. Let me just switch to another diagram over here. It's pretty much the same diagram over here. So we still have subjects versus uh, uh, observer. So you can see we still have our uh, observer over here. This is one end. And also we got our subjects that's on the other end. We still have that. 
and we still got attach and detach as explained before and also we got our polymorphic collection of observer and also we got our notify and then our got we, we have our line which will exercise the dynamic binding which correspond to uh the corresponding version for up to up to, uh, up to date with the subjects that's going to be implemented in one uh each one of the uh, effective classes and now in this case we got either forecast current condition or statistics right and then uh notice one thing which i didn't quite mention from previous one okay in the previous one there's also another routine that's in the observer which is uh the updates and notice that this particular uh routine is also deferred which means we are expecting this to be implemented so this one is deferred uh this one is also deferred so these two are to be effected or implemented effected in observer one all the way to observer j basically all the observer uh, descending classes right so now similarly we also got our updates over here as well updates okay over here and to, now we can be a little bit more uh concrete the update is going to be uh basically implemented in the forecast so in the forecast we're going to have updates the version for updating the forecast app which is only uh, concerned about the uh, pressure and also we're going to have another version of the updates over here for current condition which will be uh simply just the uh, uh humidity and also the temperature and also we got for st uh, statistics we also got our version of the updates which will be concerned about only the uh temperature right so now you can see this will be version number one this will be version number two this will be version number three dynamically uh each of the observer over here can either be a forecast it can be a current condition it can be a uh, statistics uh, statistics app which version of the update it is going to call depends on the dynamic type for the member in the list okay so hopefully so far it still makes sense uh let me just uh look at the weather data over here so weather data is a subject so you can see we have inheritance over here think about this part over here is the pattern think about this part uh let me just uh highlight uh Think about this part over here and also this part over here is more is more like the pattern and this part over here the descendants and also all the descending classes at this level over here so these are these are sort of like an instantiation for your application okay so now for the weather data you can see now it should make sense right so we can we got temperature we got humidity we got pressure pretty much uh what you learned about in uh from the uh from the background in the design number one they still apply okay also we got correct limits in order for us to write nice uh class invariant we shouldn't drop the good bits uh from the previous design okay so that's about the two architecture diagram to really help you understand what the observer pattern is really about hopefully for those of you who understand uh we got a very solid background from the previous lecture for the inheritance just by looking at the two design diagram you can already have some basic sense about how things should work even without seeing the code if that's the case for you then congratulations you i think uh, you're really now promoting your thinking above the code level which is very important for this course if you haven't that will be the direction you would like to work on uh maybe harder okay so now we're done with the architecture so now we would like to see some implementation for uh the observer pattern especially how we apply this to the weather station uh example let's go back to uh the slides uh, a few more terminologies to really go over with you quickly so now for the observer pattern uh sometimes people also call this the publish subscribe pattern think about every observer is actually subscribed to a single subject the same subjects and then whenever the subjects uh, uh has a new updates they will publish the updates to the uh, uh observer okay and then it's really a one-to-many relation so we talk about one single subject and multiple or many observers but in general we would like to see many to many but that's uh that's not our concern just yet for now let's assume we got only one single subject and many uh, observers let's see how the observer pattern can elegantly solve the problem and the observers or subscribers so wh whenever you talk about the observer pattern you will simply say uh, uh you will say observers versus subjects 
But when you refer to the published subscribe pattern, which is essentially the same, you'll talk about subscriber and also publisher. So which one to use? As long as you're being consistent, that's okay. But I'll stick to the standard one to say, talk about observers and also subjects. Okay, and the subject will notify its attached observers about changes. Basically, we're going to maintain uh, this observer's polymorphic list. And then every time this, uh, the uh, subject got any new changes, it's going to notify to every observer that's already attached to this particular subject. That's something we'll see uh, visually. Okay, some interchangeable vocabulary. Let's see. Uh, whenever I say subscribe, it, re it really means attach or register. I think I'll mainly say attached, but sometimes I might say either one, right? So subscribe, uh, attach or register, they really mean uh, from, uh, you will attach an observer to a subject. Uh, also, an observer can be uh, subscribed to a subject and etc. You can also unsubscribe. Uh, detach or unregister a particular observer from the subjects, right? So once you un uh, once you detach an observer from the subjects, next time when the subject has to notify changes, that particular detached observer will not be notified anymore, right? It makes sense. Okay, and when we talk about publish, it's really about when the uh, subject want to notify the change uh, to all its uh, subscribe observers. So publish really means uh, notify and then handle. So handle over here means every time if you the subject wants the observer to really keep up to date. So this is really the updates that we're talking about. So the updates, sometimes people uh, also like to call handle. So the observer has to handle the changes that has been just being, uh, uh, that has been synchronized uh, with the latest change on uh, from the subject side. So that's about the terminology. You can go over that. Just make sure you're, you're feeling comfortable whenever you talk to your colleagues about uh, this observer pattern. So now let's now go over uh, the implementation quickly.